Zechariah 5, 1 through 6, 15. Devotional Focus Verse Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Zechariah 5, 1 through 2. In advertising, where one of the key goals is to capture attention and make a lasting impression, aerial advertising banners are an eye-catching means of communicating information. Usually made from a lightweight material such as nylon, the banners are often brightly colored and bear a company's logo or message. The concept behind them is simple. They invite you to look up and pay attention. Aerial advertising banners were first used shortly before World War II. Aviation pioneer and New Hampshire airport owner Arnold Sidney Butler is generally credited with being the innovator. He is renowned for attaching long, trailing banners to his fleet of Piper J-3 Cubs and having them flown across the sky. Once the war ended, aerial advertisements became increasingly common. Major businesses such as the Pepsi-Cola Corporation began to use aerial advertising for marketing their products. Today, aerial messages have been towed across thousands of popular beaches, busy highways, county and state fairs, music festivals, and football stadiums. While historians name Mr. Butler as the originator of this form of creative messaging, he wasn't really the first. In today's text, we read that the prophet Zechariah saw a huge roll or scroll with writing on it flying through the air. The scroll must have been open because Zechariah could see how large it was. It measured approximately 15 by 30 feet. Aerial messages are generally towed by an airplane or drone, but the scroll Zechariah saw was guided by God. And its message did not promote a company, announce a sale, or highlight a logo. God's scroll contained news of a judgment that was soon to be poured out upon the people of Judah. In the community of returned exiles, it appears that theft and lying the two sins specifically condemned by the flying scroll were common abuses of God's law. God chose a vivid and unforgettable way for Zechariah to impress upon the people of Judah that sin does not pay, letting them know that both the thief and the liar would be cut off. And though we likely will not see an aerial banner calling us to look up and pay attention, the same message is true today. While sin may not be punished immediately, a day of reckoning will come, and all who have not repented of their sins will face God's judgment. God's amazing grace and mercy are available to those who come to Him in repentance, but His justice demands condemnation and punishment for sin that is not repented of. Let us purpose today to learn a lesson from the flying scroll that Zechariah saw and follow God's instructions with very careful obedience. Background Information Today's text records the final three visions revealed to the prophet Zechariah, messages that further disclosed God's intent for Israel's future. Chapter 5 describes Zechariah's sixth vision, which was of a flying roll, or scroll, signifying God's future judgment against sinners. It also relates the seventh vision, which was of the woman in the ephah, or clay pot, that was carried away. This illustrated God purging the very principle of sin from the land. The eighth and final vision is recorded in chapter 6 and was of four chariots carrying God's judgment to the nations. Following the visions, God gave Zechariah a message regarding the crowning of Joshua the high priest, who typified the branch, the Messiah who will eventually reign over Israel as both priest and king. In vision 6, described in verses 1 through 4 of chapter 5, 
The roll that Zechariah saw flying through the sky measured 20 cubits by 10 cubits, or at least 30 feet by 15 feet. The reference to the curse in verse 3 indicates that the scroll represented God's judgment against sinners, particularly those who violated God's law by stealing and lying. Its immense size indicated that his indictment was large and detailed. The roll's dimensions were the same as the holy place in the tabernacle in the wilderness, possibly portraying that the judgment meted out would match the people's failure to align to the law of the sanctuary. This judgment would expose even the most private of sins, denoted by the roll's entrance and destruction of the houses of thieves and perjurers. In the seventh vision, verses 5 through 11, Zechariah saw an ephah, a container used for dry measurement, which would have been somewhat larger than a bushel basket. The prophet was told that it goeth forth, meaning it would be taken out of the land of Israel. This container had a circular lead lid, and when it was lifted, Zechariah saw a woman inside who was the personification of wickedness. Two women with wings like the wings of a stork carried this symbol of sin from Israel to Shinar, a place mentioned eight times in the Old Testament, always in reference to the geographical location of the land of Babylon, which symbolized world idolatry. The words established and set in verse 11 denote firmness and finality. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, records Zechariah's eighth and final vision, four war chariots pulled by horses of various colors. The colors of the horses are of uncertain significance. These chariots were instruments used by God to execute his judgment. They emerged from between two mountains of brass, generally thought to be Mount Zion and the Mount of Olives and thus representing the source of divine judgment. Their primary mission was directed toward the north country, probably a reference to Babylon. When judgment was inflicted upon the nation that had destroyed the temple and oppressed God's people, God would be quieted, his wrath would be appeased. After the visions, at God's direction, Zechariah crowned Joshua the high priest in a foreshadowing of the triumphant Messiah, high priest and king, who will one day reign. In verses 10 through 11, Zechariah was instructed to accept the donations of three men who had recently arrived from Babylon and use these gifts to make silver and gold crowns to place on Joshua's head. This action looked beyond Joshua to the coming Messiah, whose name is the Branch. See verse 12. This familiar title for the Messiah was previously introduced in Zechariah 3, 8. The promise that he shall build the temple of the Lord indicated that the Messiah himself would build a future temple and would also unite both the roles of high priest and king. Verse 14 states that the two joined crowns would be in the temple as a memorial or a reminder of the message that God gave through Zechariah. The phrase in verse 15, they that are far off, likely refers to Gentiles. Their uniting with Israel in service to God in the temple would testify to the validity of the prophet's words. Conclusion Zechariah's final three visions demonstrate God's authority over evil and his plan for the Israel of the future. They challenge us to be mindful of the judgment that will come upon those who reject God's instructions and the blessings that will accrue to those who follow him in obedience. Zechariah Chapter 5 Then I turned, and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll, the length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, 
For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Then the angel that talked with me went forth, and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said moreover, This is their resemblance through all the earth. And, behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes, and looked, and, behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established, and set there upon her own base. Zechariah. Chapter 6. And I turned, and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and, behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot black horses. And in the third chariot white horses, and in the fourth chariot grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzled go forth toward the south country. And the bay went forth, and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth, and he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai, of Tobijah, and of Jediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go into the house of Josiah the son of Zephaniah. Then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the counsel of peace shall be between them both. And the crown shall be to Helam, and to Tobijah, and to Jediah, and to him the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God.